introduced you to those who don't know you uh, as well, but you are what I would call one of the most well-known local artists that uh, Southeastern Manitoba has generated in the last long time, maybe even ever. So um, you are performing and working across the country right now. You are originally from? Originally from Steinbach, Manitoba, I'm going to say, because that's true. Steinbach, Manitoba, and currently living in Toronto. So we're yeah. uh, we're pumped to have you here. Where are you right now? I'm right now in Steinbach, Manitoba, believe it or not. I'm uh, <laughs> at my father-in-law's house. So I'm not that far away, and uh, it's great being back here. I've never seen so much snow in my entire life, and uh, I, you know, everywhere we go with my family, we just keep thinking world class because this is like, it's amazing. We're on our spring break, and to come out here like and see these mountains of snow everywhere, and like we did a snow maze, and we've done lots of skating stuff, and it's it's world class out here. That's what I think. Hey, that that is how we like to sell Manitoba. So. Yeah. Uh, thanks again for joining us. So we we want to take the opportunity to get to know you a little bit before your concert coming up in April. So tell us a little bit right now. What's uh, what's keeping you busy um, either in the studio or or just work wise? What are you what are you busy with right now? Well, I've been working really hard the last couple of months, actually, on a big composing project. So my life is made up of sort of half writing and half performing. And so the last few months I've been working on a TV show for, boy, almost three months now, um, just writing music for different like kinds of themes and spending a lot of time on the computer scrolling through tracks. Um, so I've been doing that and also doing some piano recording. I, I have like a little side side hustle, can we call it, uh, under my Michael Jansen name. Uh, and it's I do some like little piano songs that get released online so i've been doing some of that as well awesome so never a dull moment for you so what is what is um we're we talk as artists a lot about what what has kept us busy through the pandemic i mean obviously there's projects and and a lot of these things are long term right they don't they don't just come up one week and then the next week you perform and you're done so what has been keeping you busy over the last two years as we've all been experiencing a little bit a little lockdown yeah, well, for me, my my history, like uh, prior to the two years, I actually was recovering from a concussion. So I didn't actually do a whole lot for the last sort of five years as far as playing. And I was just coming out of that when the pandemic hit. So um, I had got a few orchestra shows in just before the pandemic hit. And then once it hit, it sort of felt like it was back to regular life in some ways, which was, you know, isolating. Um, and so what I worked on and what I love to work on in those kind of seasons is like writing projects, um, writing new songs or finishing off songs I'd written a few years ago, um, a Psalms project I released. So I got that recorded and produced and mixed and sort of got that out there during the pandemic, uh, which was really fun to do because every artist was available. No one was on tour. So that was amazing. I could really pick whoever I wanted to be on the album. Um, and then also, uh, you know, I learned like a lot of musicians, I learned how to zoom and do technology and concerts and online stuff. And I released some online practice videos for piano and did a whole bunch of stuff just virtually to get stuff out there. And, and that was a whole learning experience because I started out not really knowing a whole lot about any of that equipment. We have all learned like crazy. I mean, even even over summer and fall when restrictions in Manitoba weren't so bad, we stopped having video meetings for a while. And then all of a sudden we maybe needed to get back on board there. And we all felt like we like we had forgotten everything that we had learned, but but it comes back so quickly. So that's that's really cool. We're all just adapting to technology. What tell me a little bit about what um I mean you mentioned you mentioned recovering from concussion. What does a typical day look like for you when you're working and you're busy and you're doing a lot of projects? And then and maybe tell me a little bit about what has changed, you know, from from the time pre-concussion to now. Yeah, well, it's it's been a long injury in a lot of ways. Um, and the first few years, I really could do zero. Um, I'll talk more about that at the concert, but I was really left on the sidelines of not being able to do any music stuff. I, I would practice a little bit in my studio, like maybe half an hour a day tops before I got really dizzy and I would really couldn't do anything for a few years. So, um, 
so after that, I started to improve and gradually year by year, I've improved to the point now where I'm pretty much full time working. Um, my latest project, you know, I was doing 12, 14 hour days for a few months straight. So I was able to do that. And every now and then I have to take maybe a few more breaks than I used to or um, close my eyes for 30 seconds. Um, but in general, it's I, I'm really pleased. The uh, recovery has gone really well and my days are fairly normal these days where I can work as hard as I need to, but you know, I may not be pulling the all nighters like I used to when I was younger. Uh, that might not be a smart move these days. So uh, maybe that's, maybe that's about youth <laughs> more than anything <laughs> that's, else. <laughs> that's what people tell me. I'm hoping that's true, but uh, yeah, you know, musicians often, you know, some of the best work happens at night. So, um, but I, I definitely having two kids and also probably a bit of the concussion. I definitely try to pack it in earlier during the night. So you mentioned your kids and your family. Uh, tell me a little bit about them and, and are they involved in, in music at all? Like, do they, do they, do they do what their dad does? Well, surprisingly, yeah, everyone in the, in the family plays piano. Uh, my wife's actually a great piano player and that's been passed on probably mostly through her actually to our kids um, who are both playing piano. Um, I'm expecting at some point down the road, they'll rebel against the piano thing and do something different. But my uh, 11 year old daughter, daughter is actually, I think she has a beautiful voice already. And uh, my five year old is just sort of starting the basic piano stuff right now and seems to want to practice forever. So that's a good sign too. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun in the house. Awesome. Um, so what's it? I mean, you you're you're on a you're on a holiday right now in Manitoba visiting Grandpa, um, probably more than more than just Grandpa. Uh, but uh, what what's um, what's it like to bring your family home right now um, and just reengage with family? I guess now that we're now that we're able to. And then on top of that, it's not this this particular trip out, but what? what is it like to say you're going to come home and perform? I mean, you perform everywhere. You work with, with Canada's greatest orchestras. Like what's it like to come back to Steinbach and to, to say that you have a performance for your, for your home, your home crowd? You know, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, there's something about coming home that um, it, it's really special. When I was younger, coming home actually was the most nerve wracking thing I could have ever done. And probably my most nervous concert ever was, I remember one that happened at Providence College where I, it was my first time coming back after growing up here, but going away for school. And I was just shaking in my boots. I was so nervous. Um, but now coming back, there's just so many fond memories here of uh, both shows with Steve and Winnipeg and the symphony. And also, you know, um, the last show we did in Steinbach with the trio jazz trio was a blast. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to the connections. And I think as you get older, you value those connections more and more. So um, something very special about coming back to do a concert, especially because there haven't been a lot of concerts over the last few years. So this is great. It's it's a uh, it's a really emotional experience when you get back into that live musical setting. So we're we're looking forward to that. So I have a couple of questions that I prepared for you, and I and I, I'm curious, um, sort of short answer style uh, or or short paragraph style, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. We're excited to learn to keep learning about you, obviously, but tell me about maybe what is one of your most uh, memorable musical experiences of all time. Yeah, I mean, that's a hard one because there are lots, but you know, one that definitely jumps out to me um, was a number of years back, uh, my first concert with the WSO and Steve Bell. Um, I was a musician that was a bit messed up. I had been classically trained, gone to school for my master's at U of T, um, but then as soon as U of T was done, I had started sort of jazz in Toronto and I launched hard into jazz. But then I also was in this pop rock band for about 15 years. Um, and so I felt like a bit of a messed up musician in some ways. Uh, and Steve Bell, you know, took me on the, the road for touring. And then he sort of found out that I did a number of other things like classical and arranging. And he took a chance and got me to do some arranging for the WSO. Um, which was probably one of my most challenging experiences as well was uh, arranging for the WSO because I thought I knew what I was doing after my master's. But as I started writing that project, I realized I was way over my head and I began, you know, every day listening a little bit to like Brahms and Beethoven and taking scores and just seeing how they orchestrated and slowly 
I, you know, put together the concert and then sitting on that stage, uh, the Centennial Concert Hall, and just sort of realizing that somehow in my life, all these opposite places of music sort of all came together in one concert where, you know, I was playing with Steve Bell, which was sort of that pop thing. I was having a chance to do some improvising, which I love to do, which is in that jazz world. Uh, but the class, you know, the classical orchestration part, you know, the orchestra was playing these charts. Uh, and it was just such a moving experience. And, and you know, it, it really stands out to me in my life for sure. So your greatest musical mentor or inspiration? You know, I, you know, I have a few people that I've uh, really looked up to um, probably with how they play. And then there's other people I've looked up to as who they are, which would be someone like a Steve Bell. I've really um, so appreciate him going on tour with them and just listening to him talk and live life and sort of see how he expresses his faith through life. So he's been probably one of the biggest. Um, and then in, in the music, I might pick someone like Keith Jarrett, um, who's like half classical, half jazz, and has found sort of that by bringing these two opposite worlds together, he's expressed something new. So I think he might be one of my favorites. Cool. Your favorite non-musical pastime? Favorite non-musical pastime? It's a good question. Uh, soccer might be one of the things. I'm not good at it at all, but I, I go to the park with a ball and I see if I can, you know, get the ball to stay up in the air for more than 10 times in a row. So, you know, that's something I do by myself. Um, and, I, and anything outdoors, I love hiking or outdoor stuff. So any chance I get to go, you know, swimming in some random lake or hike through the forest or anything outdoors, that would probably be my, uh, one of my favorite places. Awesome. So this one from Tara in the office next door, uh, she'd like to know what your favorite guilty pleasure jam is. What do you turn on? What do you listen to to get your blood moving when you need it? Yeah, no, that's great. Um, um, I would say, um, I mean, I've been listening a lot to Encanto these days because my kids are, you know, they're into it big time. So there's been a lot of dancing to, we don't talk about Bruno, but um, I'm, I'm going to go back old school, which is um, when we have a party at our house or get together and there's some kids around and, you know, we need something to lift the party or we're on the ice and we need to dance a bit. You know, we, I pull out the old school, everybody dance now. Nice. Um, you know, <laughs> everybody dance now, that whole thing. And uh, just sort of keep the extended mix going on and then and see what happens after that. Boy, it's not only uh, a little bit of end of day fatiguing that's uh, aging us right now. <laughs> so that's, that's cool. Um, what this is the last one. Well, almost the last one. What is something that you know now that you wish you had known 20 years ago about being a musician? Wow, that's a great one. You know, I, I think probably that life, it's not always long. We're not guaranteed that life goes out, works out for us. Um, but I think the thing growing up, um, a lot of people when I was younger, um, sort of tried to correct me in that I had my fingers in a bunch of different pies and they kept trying to tell me to focus on one thing. And I, and I did do that. So I, when I did classical, I focused on classical When I did jazz, I focused on that jazz. But I think what I didn't realize is each of us are unique. Um, and each of us have sort of gifts and talents and interests that no one else does. And when we actually put those and go after those, um, something unique can happen and it doesn't have to look like someone else. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest thing is I've been able to chase down some dreams, luckily. And um, it sort of involves actually expressing myself in all these different places of classical jazz and pop. And somehow when they come together, it, it's a happy place for me. And um, I think it's sort of probably what I'm made to do is to create and have fun with that. So yeah, that's probably one of the biggest things. There it is. Awesome. A couple of rapid fire questions to end this this time together. Uh, your favorite or your typical Starbucks order? Uh, yeah, it would be a London Fog. Grande London Fog. What's your uh, most recent Netflix binge? Uh, we're going back to the office, old school office. Nice. You're, uh, the first thing that you do when you get off the plane visiting Manitoba? Uh, I head as fast as I can to um, 
Oh, it's not there anymore. Cinnamon buns. I can't get, I can't get the tall grass. I can't get the, okay. So I, I, I go to Rocky mountain, the chocolate factory there. It's the first thing I do. Beautiful. And the first thing that you do when you get home after uh, touring Toronto. First thing I do is uh, I, I, would, I would come in the door and give my girls a big hug and probably probably leave my stuff scattered all over the house. So my wife has to <laughs> ask me about it later, but I probably just hang out with the girls for a bit. <laughs> Favorite Mennonite food? Ooh, that is tough. Um, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with raw kuchen. Favorite non-Mennonite food? Uh, I'm going to go Moroccan pie. You've answered a couple of these before uh, already, but your favorite outdoor activity? Uh, favorite outdoor activity, I'm going to say paddleboarding. Favorite sport? Yeah, I'm going to go soccer. Oh, basketball. We'll go basketball. Basketball it is. Uh, do you have a favorite author? Um, let's see, you know, right now I'm reading a book about weather and I can't remember that author, but I'm going to say Andrew Peterson. He's a musician who's based, based out of Nashville. And I, I, I've really liked his reading the last, last little bit. Awesome. Mike, this has been a lot of fun. It's been great to catch up for a couple minutes just before this interview and throughout the interview. And we're looking forward to seeing you in Steinbach. April 5th, 7.30 p.m. at Emmanuel Evangelical Free Church. We've got tickets on sale. Uh, call the Arts Centre or visit steinbeckarts.ca. Uh, the poster is all around town, folks. Make sure you keep your eyes open and uh, and can't wait to see you, Mike, on stage. Yeah, I'm going to shave. I better shave because that poster, I don't look like that anymore, so I better shave. Hey, I, like, nothing to be ashamed of either way. So there you go. Okay, we'll see what happens. Well, I'm looking forward to a lot. I can't wait to see folks and uh, excited to have a concert finally. So it, there's nothing quite like live music, that's for sure. It's uh, it's happening. It's happening. Uh, thanks, Mike. We'll talk to you okay. in a couple of weeks. Okay, thanks, David. All right, take care. Yeah. Okay.